previously. And so we go. Hello, friends of the internet. Welcome back to Professor Layton in the Curious Village. We got summoned by Professor Chelmy, so let's get going. There's nobody downstairs? No? Okay, up we go. <clears throat> oh shit. Are you trying to poison me? What are these vile things? You oaf. Some butler you are. I I'm so sorry, sir. I detest sweets. Very sad of them turns my stomach. Get that plate out of here at once. Oh, yes, but of course. Good lord, you're rude. Huh? Ah, Leighton, there you are. You requested our presence, Inspector Chomi. My sources tell me you've been out snooping about and interfering with my case. Just what are you up to? It certainly wasn't my intention to interfere in your case. However, a few things don't make sense. You have to investigate into the police and go chase after that golden apple or whatever it is. Don't you worry your pretty little head about it. I'll find Simon's killer of that, you can be sure. Hmm. Now, unless you have something else to say, I've got work to do here. Understood. Good day, sir. That inspector has some nerve dismissing us like that. Like I said before, I don't like him one bit. Hmm. What do you say we go ask Ringman about yesterday, Luke? Is he not upstairs? Oh, Professor, how fortunate that you're here to tell me like this. I have a favor to ask of you. Please, madam, ask away. I'm happy to come to your aid in any way I can. Thank you, Professor. Could you solve this puzzle for me? Though I'm not feeling up to the challenge, it won't solve itself. I... What good is a puzzle if someone else solves it for you? No. A father and son are having a conversation. The father turns to the son and says, You know, son, there was a time when your old man was twice the age of your mother. Of course, nec the next year, I was only one and a half times her age. But still, that's pretty amazing, eh? Father is 44 years old. How old is the mother? I see to find the difference between the father's age and the mother's age. At what ages are the two parents separated by two times the age of the mother? There's only one point when the father's age can change from twice the mother's age to 1.5 times the mother's age after one year. I'm thinking, I'm sorry. Is she forty three? He's only a year older than her. That's right, the mother is 43 years old. When the boy's father was two years old, his mother was one. The next year, he turned three and she turned two. When you realize that this is the only combination of ages that yields the ratio function of the problem, everything starts to make sense. <coughs> that makes a lot of sense. What a relief. I can finally stop thinking about that silly puzzle. You have my thanks. Splendid painting? Painting? Or 
professor, you just simply have to help me. I've got another puzzle on my hands I just can't solve. As a man of the world, you know there's nothing women find more alluring than incompetence. Counting on you, sir. Don't do me to an eternal bachelorhood. You're ridiculous. Oh, fuck. The cross shape in the pin board below has nine pins inside it and six on the outside. I remember that example because now it's your turn to construct a shape on the board. Can you create a cross that has 17 pins inside and 16 outside? That's, we know this is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Luke, here's my answer. It has to be a cross. Alright, alright. So Four good days, a total of 49 pins. Subtract 16 pins on the outside and 17 on the inside. You get 16, the number of pins that will make up your cross. There are only a few ways you could place a 16 pin cross on the board. When you think about it, you're onto something. When you think you're onto something but don't quite have enough space to draw your cross, you should try something a little bit different, maybe changing the orientation.
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen. Uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Yeah, okay. That's what you want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eight. Okay, that's what you want for me. Let's get to work. <clears throat> uh, just like it's kind of a cross, does that count? <laughs> Thanks, old boy. With this puzzle solved, I feel like I've drawn one step closer to the altar. Small clock. Maybe it doesn't matter. Someone give me an ear. I want a dog ear. Mr. Layton, you seem to have some skill at solving puzzles. Yes, I once cracked a case by solving a puzzle left behind on a note I found hidden at the crime scene. Let's see how you fare against it. Mm. Mysterious note. Okay. The detective who was mere days from cracking an international smuggling ring has suddenly gone missing. While inspecting his last known location, you find a note. The note appears to be nothing more than a series of numbers, but your gut instinct tells you that this note will reveal the name of the cr crime kingpin. Currently, there are three suspects in the case, Bill, John, and Todd. Can you break the detective's code to find out the criminal's name? Okay. C D E F G G Oh Clay G A Jump that doesn't make sense. Unless it's seven ten. So G a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Nope, that doesn't make sense either. Uh. Hmm. Alright, I need a hint on this one. I'm pretty bad at cryptograms. Here's a little pearl of a gumshoe wisdom. The best way to understand something to, uh, isn't to study it intently from one perspective. Instead, try to approach the problem from a variety of angles. Sometimes you've seen all there is about a case. How about upending everything to give you a new view on matters? Have you considered turning your... Yes, put on? Bill is boss. He sells... Oil. Bill is boss. He sells oil. Let's get to work. Another puzzle solved. Bill is boss. He sells oil. That's right. If you flip that upside down, you'll notice that the numbers resemble letters. And that those letters form logical sentences. The message recorded here is Bill is boss, he sells oil. What does it mean he sells oil? Impressive, Mr. Layton. It seems the rumor tooting your skills weren't totally unfounded. But don't go getting any ideas. The smart thing leads the detective work to me. In the meantime, you can occupy yourself by searching for the golden apple. Yay, more painting scraps. Almost got the painting complete. Let's look at that real quick. Ooh, in the journal. 
The inspector had a, inspector had a few sharp words for us when we showed up. Doubtless because we've been conducting an investigation that runs parallel to his own. As much as I'd like to help find Simon's killer, there are other matters we should attend to first. Namely, checking in on Raymond to see what, if anything, he remembers of last night. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. Alright, let's see. Where do you go? Right here? Yep. Okay. Kitten. My goodness. Looks like it's a picture of uh, Madame Violet. Okay. Onward. I uh, solved your puzzles. It's time to go look for Raymond. Hey. What's up, you? Good day, Raymond. How are you feeling today? It is a fiddle now, Professor. Perhaps even a little, uh, even as vivacious as a violin. <laughs> that awful fatigue from last week seems like it never happened. As you can see, I'm bursting with energy. My skin is soft as a baby's. I feel like a teenager again. Is that so? That's good to hear. He doesn't seem to remember what happened yesterday, does he? He has no idea what happened. What's our next move? We shall re inspect respect the ins we shall respect the inspector's wishes and leave the murder case alone, Luke. It's as Inspector Chalmy said: solving crime is the police's job. Besides, something tells me that this case and the golden after are more related. Apple are more related than I they suspect. Blech. That's the intuition of yours talking again, isn't it, Professor? First and foremost, we need to find a clue that will bring us closer to the golden apple. Perhaps one of Baron Reinhold's relations to our close friends can help point us in the right direction. Of course, there's also someone else. Let's see if the family butler has anything to say on the subject. The hunt begins. It's finally time to start the search for the golden apple. Explore St. Mystery for clues. Save your progress. Don't mind if I do. Holy crap. <laughs> Thank you. 68 puzzles. Jeez. Hey, Raymond's gone. Talk with Matthew. Is he in here? Matthew! Back so soon, Professor. Matthew, I was wondering if you knew anything that could point us in the direction of the Golden Apple. Anything you know would be a great help. For example, did the Baron say anything before he passed away? I'm so sorry to disappoint you, Professor, but the Master never said anything of the sort to me. I'd very much like to help you in your search, but my duties here prevent me from leaving the grounds. If only Ingrid is around to provide some assistance. I beg your pardon, Sir Ingrid? It's been years since she left, but Ingrid used to work as a servant in the method. She was poor as nurse, and she often helped me with my work. Matthew! Y yes, madam, I'll be right there. Please excuse me, sir, the lady calls. If you're curious about Ingrid, why not pay her a visit to talk to her yourself? Let's see, at this time of day, I imagine she'll be out walking uh, around by the general store. Please do me a favor and tell her that Matthew sends his regards. Certainly, I'll be sure to pass on your message. Thank you for all your help, Matthew. Isn't Ingrid that sweet old lady we, that's, we passed by before? Can't talk. Indeed, we saw her in the picture of young Flora. Come, Luke, let's find the old girl. Off we go, then. The general store is just outside the mansion, right? We'll be there in no time. Uh, as soon as I see that there's no more puzzles. You guys got more puzzles? Oh, dear, I'm stuck again. I just know I'll have a fight on my bride on my own if I never don't solve this puzzle. I'll spend my golden years alone with only the smell of cats and ribbon candy to keep me company. I beseech you, Professor. Help me solve this puzzle. Ribbon candy? What the fuck is ribbon candy? Wood cutouts. Oh, Lord. You have a single shade of balsa wood, as shown in the diagram below. Your job is to cut the wood along the dominant lines so that you end up with four identical pieces. The pieces may face different directions, but they must not be mirrored versions of each other. Go on and get chopping.
What? This puzzle would be a lot easier if you were allowed to use a mirror version for the shape as well. Since you can't, though, here's a hint to get you started on the right track. Don't start off by dividing the one of the two pieces straight through the middle. Thank you. Uh... I don't even know where to start. Have you ever seen a standard office staple? Well, that's the shape you're looking to cut out here, except it'll be a bit longer in the middle of than your standard staple. A staple? Like this? Oh. Oh. Uh. But you said they can't be mirrored. I'm gonna try this. Let's get to it. You said that couldn't be mirrored. Critical thinking is the key to success. So once you got the shape of the pieces, it wasn't so difficult. But it wasn't all that easy to find them within the wood, was it? That is mirrored. The puzzle lied to me. Oh, happy day. With that puzzle out of the way, I'm confident that no woman will be able to resist you. I'm bidding my loneliness goodbye before I know it. Mysterious bottle. Do you have another puzzle for me, Dahlia? I'd like to be left alone for the while, Professor. I need some time to collect my thoughts. You needn't worry. I assure you that I'll find something to kill by myself. For now, just let me do my job and go back to your search for that golden apple. I hope, had hoped Raymond would remember something of last night, but it says I feared he remembers nothing. How could someone go through something as jarring as a kidnapping and remember nothing of it? Now I must put my curiosity to the side and return to our search for the golden apple. Perhaps Matthew could tell us something. Talking with Matthew revealed that the Reinholds formerly had another servant in their employ. Unless I'm mistaken, Matthew was referring to Ingrid, the nanny pictured in that old photo we saw earlier. She is usually out by the general store at this time of day, so finding her shouldn't prove too difficult. Okay, cool. And I got a bottle. I don't even know. It's just a bottle. <laughs> Alright, let's go find Ingrid. So, I know that you're Ingrid. Give me a second. Lady Dahlia sure is gorgeous, ain't she? Yep, sure is. What a dish. What a doll. What a honey. Guys like that are pretty rare, I tell you. Yep, yep. Thank you. I see her there. I promise I see her. Oh. Those candies look absolutely scrumptious, don't they? Look, those candies just gave me a splendid idea for a puzzle. Have a listen to this. Candy jars. You have 10 jars filled with 50 pieces of candy each. You then pour the candy into small bags and attempt to get half a jar in each bag. Now you have 20 bags of candy. Whoop. Is the percentage likelihood that there are an average of 25 for pieces of candy in a single sack? Should be a hundred, right? Very good. You had 50 pieces of candy in 10 jars, giving you a total of 500 pieces of candy. 
We divided 500 pieces into 20 bags, so of course the mathematical average of this will be 25 pieces a bag. There we are. What to discern what the question is saying? The problem is rather a simple one, isn't it? Ah! It's the last piece to the dog. I need that in my life right now. There we are. The little robot dog is finally assembled. Now we just have to name the rascal. I have a feeling it will come in quite handy. By the way, Luke, I have a present for you to mark the occasion. Turn off your Nintendo DS once, then restart the game. At the title screen, scale like bonuses, and you should have a hidden challenge for me. Now, I know you're excited about your present, but be sure to save before you restart your DS. The Fincher's house has been added to your map. Please enter your dog's name. Uh... Why won't it make an A? Okay. Hope you don't mind, Evangelion, but I'm naming the dog after you. So, I... You're so cute. Okay. Um, I want to see what it gives me if I save and quit. You guys want to see? Let's save. So, we'll save over this one. Okay, 70 puzzles. Um, how do I quit the game? Uh, there isn't a quit button. I have to actually turn off the DS. Uh, okay, we'll look at it later. When we come back to this. For now, let's continue on with the story. Oh, my goodness me. If it isn't Mr. Mm, Mr. Layabout, was it? Uh, the name's Layton, madam. That's right, Mr. Layton. What can I do for you, sir? Earlier, we were talking with the butler at Reinhold Manor, and he mentioned he used to work there. I would very much like to hear anything you might know about the Baron. Heavens me, you want to hear about the Baron? I'm afraid the only stories I have are from when I worked at the Manor. That was ages ago. That would be ideal, madam. Would you mind telling us one? All right, well, I suppose I could tell you a bit about the Baron and his former wife. The way Master Reinhold and his wife seem to carry on, they almost seem to be like children. They never seen a man so in love as Master Reinhold was. When she passed away, Flora was all the Baron had to remember her by. So he raised that little girl with all the love a child could want. The things he'd bring home for her, toys from all over the world, and teddy bears as big as yourself. He was in high spirits in those days. He really wanted to give her, uh, he really wanted to give her two parents worth of affection. So where has Flora gone? Your guess is as good as mine, sir. I have no idea where the girl went. She left the mansion well after I stopped working with the Reinholds. Some say Lady Dahlia put Flora on the street to keep the family riches to herself, but that's nonsense. After all, the Baron cared about Flora so much, I can't imagine he'd allow something like that. You know, you just reminded me. The grave of the Baron's late wife is located in the manor garden. I wonder who takes care of it now. The Baron's former wife is buried in the garden? Thank you, madam. You've been extremely helpful. Luke, let's head back to the manor. I have a hunch the grave might hold a clue to what we've been looking for. Do I go back to the manor, or do I keep looking for puzzles? I kind of want to keep looking for puzzles, but, I mean, the story. I think it could be said about that tower. I'll talk to you guys in a minute. I want to see if Crouton will give us free stuff. Good day, fellows. Did you ever track down Raymond? Indeed we did. Thank you for your assistance in the matter. Good to hear. Well, since you're here already, why not take a load off and rest for a bit? What's this? Oh my, where did I put that measuring cup? Is something the matter? 
I have 16 quarts of water that I want to divide into equal portions of eight apiece. Problem is, my measuring income seems to have grown feet. Can you think of a way I could use a seven and nine quart pitchers to divide things up? Oh, for the love of God. Crouton, why are you like this? Uh, 16 and 9 quart are each holding exactly 8. Okay. I should have poured the 9 first. Hold on. Pour the 9. That leaves 7 in here. 9 into the 7. And then 7 into here. That's 14. Pour the 2 in here. Nine there. Seven and four, five and four. Um, seven into this. It's 12. Four into here. Mm, that's not quite right. That's back to seven. All right, I messed up. I did it again. I had the solution and then I just went and screwed it up. Mm, okay, that's fine. We'll just start back from here. Whatever. It didn't matter that much. <clears throat> Hello. I love you too. I love you more. Yep. No. No. Yep. No. Yeah. No. Sorry. No. Love you. No. no. Mm -mm. There we go. Holy hell. <laughs> I was just like, how did I get there last time? There needs to be an undo button. <sighs> mm, genius. Now that you've done it for me, it all makes sense. I wish I had someone like you in the kitchen. Oh, I meant to mention this earlier. I heard a rumor that the kidnapper lives in town. You know, I've never heard of anyone heard anyone say anything good about that tower. Make sure you steer clear of it, okay? Flower bouquet.
Hey, you two. You guys like chess, right? How about it? Want to sit down for a game? I don't mind chess. Too many queens. In chess, the queen can move full length of the board diagonally, vertically, and horizontally. See if you can place the four queens in this 4x4 four four chess board. There's a catch, though. You can mess arrange the pieces so that no queen blocks another's line of movement. Good luck. All right, let's start with the corners. We know that this won't work because they're in each other's direction. So we move this one up. That won't work because it's diagonal. We move this one up. That won't work because it's diagonal. And if we put this one here and here, these don't affect these anymore. All right, one hint. line of symmetry so they can't be like this there we go that's it okay <sighs> Most queen palms like this have been around for over a century. This is a relatively simple variation of this type of puzzle, considered it an introduction to the genre. But very nice. You two are no amateurs, I see. Don't worry. Next time I'll have an even harder puzzle for you. Can you like mount that? I want to go down here, and then I'll talk to the angry guy. Hmm. It's still locked shut. Just when will this place open? I wouldn't get your hopes up. The gate's covered in dust. I don't think anyone's been here for a long time. Huh. Mm, okay. All right. I guess I'll talk to the angry guy now. Oh, this time I've really had it. I thought up this great puzzle, but I couldn't find anyone to tell it to. You thought up this puzzle? A tile square. I can't see. Hold on. Go ahead and click so you guys can look at it. Well, this looks interesting. Do you have at your disposal a large number of tiles like the one shown below? 10 inches by 12 inches and a half an inch thick. If you were to take these tiles and try to make a square, what is the fewest number of tiles you would need? To make a square? I guess it's not a square, so... 12, 24... Uh, 
12, 24, 36, 48, 60. So, oh. 12, 24. Hmm. 12, 24. Actually, it's probably a lot easier than that. No, uh, 60 by 60. Mm, no. Yeah, okay, so 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. So that's 5 this way. And then 1. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, five, six. Okay, so don't worry about this right now. Um, this one connects to this one. Two, three, four, five. S okay, so. One, two, three, four, and four is eight. Eight plus. Mm, ten. Eighteen. And then I can make it into this way. Not 18? Okay. Thank you. <sighs> it's not the answer. Try approaching the puzzle from a different angle and see where that takes you. Okay, okay. I mean, I could just cut it. Try one. No? Okay, I tried. So I can't cut it. Since the tiles have different length and width, you'll need to find a number that can be divided by both dimensions. Of course, the puzzle doesn't end there. You'll need to do a little creative thinking in order to find a few similar tiles that allow you to form a square. I already did that. Thickness of the tiles. Uh. Why does the thickness matter? What does it say a cube? You said a square. Is it four? I don't see why the thickness matters at all. I really don't. <sighs> so the size of the tile are 10 and 12 inches long. The smallest column multiple works out to 60. Therefore, you need to arrange about 5 by 6. That's, yep. That's uh, a total of 30 tiles. No, that's not 30 tiles. So apparently, I need 20 tiles. But I don't understand why. So... I made it in 18. I don't get it. I really don't. Critical thinking is the key to success. That doesn't make any sense. You can make it in less tiles. You can make it in 18 tiles. You didn't say a cube. You said a square. It can make a square. Oh, whatever. Hmm. 
You're in truth. Giving me these puzzles that don't have a correct solution. What are you looking for this time? Want to rest for a minute and solve this puzzle? Oh, you have a puzzle for me now? Which job? Two corporations have put out help one in ads. Aside from the information below, the two companies offer exactly the same. Offers are exactly the same. From a purely financial standpoint, which one would you work for? Company A will pay you a hundred thousand dollars a year and give you a twenty thousand dollar raise yearly. Company B will pay you fifty thousand dollars every six months and give you a five thousand raise every six months. <coughs> Okay, so a hundred thousand a year. They both make a hundred thousand a year. It's every six months that I'm having issues with. So one of them gives you uh, ten thousand, and company A gives you twenty thousand. So A. Luke, here's my answer. What? Oh, how embarrassing! That doesn't make sense. doesn't make sense. Please explain. Because every six months they give you a raise. Nice one. I've seen the image above. If you actually calculate things out, you see that the salary for company B will always be 5000 higher than the corresponding salary of company A. Hmm. My friend at work drew this cute little thing and sent it to me. I think it's adorable. How do I... There we go. Can you see it okay? Yeah. It's just a cute little napkin doodle. <laughs> okay. Let's continue. Oh, you did it. Okay. You did it. Okay. I guess I should give you some info as a reward. You know Lady Dahlia, right? She's planning to keep the fortune to herself once it's found. And you've been helping her all along. So don't you feel so dumb. Else plant. Okay, I got a couple more items here. Let's look at them in the journal. Ingrid told us the story of how Flora's mother passed from this world. The Baron must have truly loved his former wife, for her grave lies within the garden, presumably so that even in death she could stay close to him. Okay, and I got new stuff for the end. All right. <laughs> you have a lot more stuff than he does but like you like a lot more things I still don't know what to do with this bottle it just hides oh what did I just switch out All right. He has something to watch TV with now. There we go. All right. Let's see if we can find a couple more puzzles before we quit for this session. Maybe back this way. You have more puzzles for me? Okay, if you really want to understand Saint Mysterio, you'll need to search the village thoroughly. Good luck, fellows. You'll need it. Thank you. I don't know why you'd be the only one with the deck. Oh, she's not here. Oh, I keep clicking on him. Stop clicking on him. Hello. Okay, let's head back this way now. Oh. Granny Riddleton, do you have more stuff for me? No, 
all you do not. Okay. Figured you'd have another puzzle for me, but I guess you don't. Alright, what about the guy in here? Does he have another puzzle for me? Since you've come to the town hall, I strongly advise you follow the town procedure and solve this puzzle. I don't like this dude. Odd equations. Oh, brother. Oh my, it looks like someone's been writing nonsense on the blackboard again. It turns out, though, that under certain conditions, these strange conditions are actually correct. These strange equations are actually correct. 8 minus 6 equals 2. 8 plus 6 also equals 2. Assuming the above to be true, what does 7 plus 6 equal? What? Why does 8 plus 6 equal 2? Go away. <laughs> He's so rude. I'm so rude. Um, so let's see. Is it one? Is the answer one? Bet it's negatives. Every puzzle has an answer. Oh. Uh, okay, I'll take it. This puzzle is using time as a framework for the calculation. If you take six hours away from 8 a.m., the time becomes 2 a.m. You move forward six hours from 8 a.m., and the time becomes 2 p.m. Therefore, if you add six hours to 7 a.m., you should arrive at the answer 1 p.m. You can, of course, reverse a.m. and p.m. and still find the solution. I... Mm, okay. Thank you, that will do nicely. Now please vacate the premises. Alright. <laughs> Purely accidental solving. Is anyone in here yet? No? Okay. I need to find more hint coins. I'm gonna, like, not be able to solve puzzles. Matthew, what are you doing? Hmm? Oh, look, it's Matthew. Good day, Professor. Were you able to track down Ingrid? Yes, we did. In fact, we were just speaking with her. I mean, no disrespect, but she said the grave of the Baron's late wife lies on these grounds. Do you have any knowledge of this? Lady Violet's grave, sir. I was just about to visit it myself. Would you mind if we came along to take a look? Not in the slightest. Right this way. Here's the entrance, sirs. Please watch your step on the way in. Oh, Wow. This is Lady Violet's grave. Lady Violet's grave. Gosh, this place is really nice. It's not creepy at all. The late Baron, rest his soul, told me to keep the place in proper order, so I have tried to do so. Here sleeps Violet, my one true love. Aw. The statue looks so much like Lady Dahlia, it's hard to believe it's someone else. Back when Flora was just a tiny little thing, Lady Violet used to take her in the park in town. To the park in town. Some of the flowers in the garden grew from the other ones Flora painted here for her mother. Oh, I forgot to tell you about the Baron's journal. It should still be on the desk in the Madam's room. It's possible that it might contain some information that would aid your search for the golden apple. My thanks, Matthew. I'll be sure to give it a once over later. Now then, look, we best head back to Reinhold Manor. Oh, okay. Alright. That's enough puzzling for today. I'm going to leave that episode there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode of whatever I decide to make. Good night, signing out.